Now we're going to talk a little bit more about using circular motion, but now we're going to start focusing in on uniform circular motion. So first, there are two things that I want to highlight that are always true, not only in the case of uniform circular motion. One is that our angular velocity, this omega, is actually d theta dt. And this is just analogous to saying that our velocity is dx dt, for instance. So this is always true, but in the case of uniform circular motion, we're going to see a nice straight line so that the slope is actually going to be constant. So if you do not have uniform circular motion, if you have a more complicated circular motion, you can always use the slope of your theta versus t plot to find what omega is, but in our case of uniform circular motion, we're going to see nice straight lines. Now, changes in angle can be found as an area under the curve of our omega versus t plot, which I'm not showing. And again, this is just like saying that a change in position linearly, like x, it can be found as the area under the curve, the integral of a velocity versus time plot. And again, these are always true. But how this simplifies is that if omega is constant, which is the definition of uniform circular motion, which I will sometimes abbreviate as just UCM, that in this case, theta final is going to equal our theta initial plus our angular velocity, which again could be negative depending on the direction, times our change in time. And this should remind you a whole lot of another equation that you've seen and hopefully become very familiar with. And again, this was the equation that was only true if acceleration was equal to zero in the x direction. So similarly, in uniform circular motion, if you don't have, and we'll talk about what this is later, an angular acceleration, then we get to just use this simplified version. So you can identify if you have uniform circular motion, either if you're told that your angular velocity is constant, or if you have a situation like this. And again, this is analogous to what we talked about when we talked about uniform motion in a linear one-dimensional situation, that you can imagine breaking this up into a few pieces. And in this case, our first angular speed is given by this slope, right? We have a certain uh, delta theta corresponding to a delta t. We then have a different constant omega, a different angular velocity in this region. And finally, at this final region, this is actually equal to zero because you see that the angle isn't changing. So again, this equation's uh, going to be constant, uh, valid in each of these regions but you can't necessarily just use it for the whole thing. Now there's another variable that I want to introduce, and it really only makes sense within the context of uniform circular motion, which is why I'm introducing it now. And this is the idea of period. And period is also going to come back when we talk about oscillations later, which actually has a lot in common with uniform circular motion. So period is the time it takes for one complete revolution. So that means you start at, say, whatever angle you want. Theta can't initially start at zero or a different angle, and you go in a whole circle. So that takes some delta time, and we call that period. The, abbrevi the symbol we use for that is capital T. And P is going to get used for a lot of other things, so please don't use P for period. But capital T works since this is a time, so T but we usually use lowercase t for any time, and period is a special time, so capital T. And the best units to use for this are seconds. So now there's a few ways that this comes in, and one is to think about our angular speed as a, something that is related to period. So two pi radians is literally going in a whole circle. That is the angular equivalent to going through one complete revolution. So then you divide that by the time it takes, and that by definition is your angular, angular speed. Now the reason we have absolute value here is that this hasn't told you whether you're going clockwise or counterclockwise. Now all we can do is rearrange this equation algebraically, and you can get the period from taking two pi radians and dividing by angular speed. And remember that your angular speed is typically going to be radians per second, so in that case the radians units effectively cancel out. 
Now I want to talk just briefly uh, about some examples just to make sure you're not too confused about this. So for instance, in this case, I have a little stopwatch and my hand would start here, right? So that would be my uh, theta initial. And then it would go once I start it all the way around. And then I get back to theta final that looks completely equivalent to theta initial. And so we would in fact say that theta final equals theta initial plus two pi radians. And usually once you have an extra factor of two pi, we just kind of remove that since that's a whole circle. And you would say that the time that it takes to do this is equal to period. And so in this case, this is 60 seconds since that's how the stopwatch works. So that's all period is. And again, it's only something that come up, comes up whenever you have the idea of one complete cycle of motion, which here is one revolution. So we talk about it here in circular motion, and later we'll talk about it with oscillations. One more new uh, value that we need to introduce is the idea of a linear velocity. So we've, always, we've already talked about angular velocity, this W looking letter, lowercase omega, and remember this was angular velocity. So linear velocity here is something a little bit different than when we just talked about the x component of velocity, and it's also very different from angular velocity. And to think about this, let's imagine an object that is in uniform circular motion. So for instance, it's a rock tied on a string that's being spun in a circle, and it's always going at a constant speed. So it's easiest to think about this as a horizontal circle rather than a vertical circle. So it's going in a circle. The rock is always moving. The rock has a linear velocity at any moment in time. However, it also would have an angular velocity. So we call this the tangential velocity. And again, the idea being that that rock itself is moving just as the way that we used to think about x, y motion. And so this isn't just the rotation, but so for instance, if I had a rock that was farther out, that would actually be going faster, right? Even though they would have the same angular velocity. So to just give you a sense, the definition, one way of thinking about this, is that in one period, the time that it takes to complete one revolution, you have gone one circumference, right? So if this is my starting point, if this is theta initial, and I imagine my little rock marching along the circle, how far has it traveled? Well, it's traveled 2 pi r. That's my circumference. How long did it take? It took the period. So when we talk about tangential velocity in the situation where we have uniform circular motion, we can say that the tangential velocity is equal to 2 pi r over period. Now, we've already said that 2 pi radians, and note that in this case we're not showing radians at all. Radians has effectively uh, vanished. Uh, 2 pi divided by t is equal to my angular speed. And by using this, we can actually then say that my tangential velocity relates to my angular velocity multiplied by radians. So that's why if I say that here I have my center circle and I have one rock on my string here and I have another rock here such that this total distance is 2r, even though they would have the same angular speed, as they go around in their circle, they always come back to the same angle at the same time, they're on the same string. So their angular speed would be the same, but this rock would actually be going faster. And a simple way to think about that is if you were to come close to this person who's spinning rocks on a string for some strange reason, I would rather be hit in the head with this rock, the, the rock that's closer to the center than the rock that is farther away. The rock that's farther away is spinning faster, so it's gonna hurt a lot more when it hits me in the head. So. That's something important to think about, and we can come back to this tangential velocity later, but for right now, just think about it in terms of that circumference over the period, since we can define it that way for uniform circular motion.